Hello, this is Daniel King with my play of the day from round four of the Istanbul Olympiad. At the start of the day, 13 teams had the maximum score. At the end of the day, only four teams were on 100%. Russia, Ukraine, Armenia and Hungary. In fact, those are the four top seeds in the tournament. And my play of the day is from the Russia-China match. Russia crushed China 3-1, a real test for them, but they came through with flying colours. And I've picked the game Wang Yiwei against Alexander Grishuk. OK, let's crack on. So, Chinese player with the white pieces, played knight f3. And it's an English opening. Let me just rattle through these first few moves. Grishuk, obviously spoiling for a fight, he's playing this aggressive system with black, with e5, this so-called Botvinnik system, clamping the centre, um, and that keeps the tension. And now, an interesting move from Wang Yuei, he played h4, which I have to say I don't like very much. Uh, castles is the standard move here. If white can get in h5, then this is a reasonable idea. But Grishuk just played h6, and now, of course, h5 can be met by g5, and no harm has been done to black's position at all. The problem with h4 is that it's very committal. If white's king goes to the king side, then h4 can be a weakness. And, of course, the g4 square is weakened as well. As we'll see, both of these things came to pass. So, yeah, I'm not keen on, on uh, h4, but, OK, maybe this is a question of taste. OK, so all, these are all pretty standard moves. Um, I like Black's method of development here. Uh, first pioneered by Botvinnik. And Black just clamps down on all White's breaks with a5. Queen c1. Well, I suppose this is the justification for White's play. After this move, of course, Black can't castle. But the fact that the centre is quite closed, well, it doesn't really matter that Black hasn't castled. And actually, I don't really like... The position of the queen. It's a bit passive. Really good move from Grishuk. Always good to put rooks opposite the queen. You never know when the position can break open and this uh, positioning of the rook can be very useful indeed against the queen. White castled and now b b6 from Grishuk. Already black threatens to play d5 breaking open the position and this is very useful that the rook sits opposite the queen because it's less easy for white to break with b4. So that's why white played e4, clamping the centre, but of course this is a highly committal move and weakens the d4 square. So already I think white's strategy has really gone wrong a bit. Bishop g4 from Grishuk. There we go, I told you the g4 square is, is weak. Now white could play knight h2 here and probably the bishop will have to go back to e6 and then we're kind of repeating the position. I suppose black could go back to d7 as well but then maybe the, the knight comes back to f3. But of course that would be an admission that white has nothing from the opening. So white played rook e1 with a rook opposite the king looks very natural. Really good move from Grishuk here. Just nudging the king out of the way. He has no qualms about giving up the right to castle. He can't castle anyway at the moment. And maybe the king can just march to h7 and it's very safe indeed. But the king's also not bad on f8. Okay, white played knight d5 and black took and now took on f3 and played the knight into d4. And already I like black's position. I'm not sure I'd have played knight d5 with white. I think I'd prefer knight b5. The knight is superb on d4, and the bishops aren't really great. Uh, if the bishop comes back to g2, then I think a4 is a very strong move, just preventing any play from white on the queen side, and the knight can sit very happily on b3 if necessary. White played a very provocative move indeed, bishop g4, and Grishuk advanced with f5, and now the bishop came back to d1. So that prevents this move a4, but of course that breaks the communication in White's army and Grishuk exploited this straight away. Of course he could have played slowly here, you know, maybe king f7 or something, but that would give 
White the opportunity to get some counterplay on the queen side, you know, open a file, maybe get some counterplay against the king. But Grishuk, not a man to ever hold back, stormed forward with g5, and this is a wonderful pawn sacrifice. So after the exchange, bishop takes. So pure pawn sacrifice. Queen d7. Bishop f6 is also quite good for black there. Now the threat is just to play f4 and get the queen in. Therefore, white played queen e3. Maybe f4 was better there, but okay, black would still have very good compensation. Now you can see that Grishuk is making a virtue out of the fact that he hasn't castled, and the rook is already on the open h-file, and in combination with this knight, this is very dangerous indeed. Let's see what happened. Okay, queen f7, the, the, the queen is just nudging over to here, maybe to, to h7. King g2, bishop f6, okay, the path is clearing for the queen. And here, well, I think already white is in some trouble. He could check, but the king would just come up to e7 and rook number two is coming over. And don't forget f4 is happening. Maybe rook g1, um, allowing the queen out. But in this case, I think black would also have excellent compensation. The rook swinging over. And if b4, then, well, queen h7 is already absolutely crushing. Looking to come down here. But, okay, all these would have been a bit better. Well, certainly... Um, Rook g1 would have been a bit better than the game continuation, which was bishop a4. And I understand why white wanted to connect these rooks and to try and defend with rook h1, but unfortunately this overlooked, uh, the Chinese player overlooked a terrible tactic. Grishuk took on g5 and then slammed down with rook h2. Of course, that can't be taken because the knight would come to f3 and a devastating family fork. So the king game came back to f1. Grishuk was in some time pressure here, so he just repeated moves. And that gave him a little bit of time to think, and he came up with the winning move. In fact, not very difficult to see. Queen h7, a quiet move, but a devastating move. White cannot prevent queen h3 and checkmate. Grishuk completely outplayed his opponent in this game, strategically actually, and was so alert to the possibility of attack with this wonderful pawn sacrifice, g5. Many other players would have just passed and perhaps played a, a slower move, but g5 really seized the initiative. Fantastic game from Grishuk, and well, with Russia's players on such form, they look like the big favourites in the tournament so far, but all to play for. Uh, round five tomorrow. I look forward to it. See you for my next play of the day. Thanks very much for watching.